NFC NFC Live in love Who really care? How do we translate this NFC living the faith in evil language? Azum? NFC No, no, no. NFC is living the faith NFC is living the faith I wish to thank all of you gathered here, especially uh, the chaplain, or a grandma. I call him the chaplain of chaplains because this is the the first Catholic university down here, and you are. One, the, the first also, the first chaplain is something to thank you immensely. I also wish to thank Father John Adimike and also my name Sister Paola Ute. So I wish to thank you all, my dear students, especially the NFCSRs. It is with great joy and humility that I stand before you today to discuss a topic of immense importance which is equipping the next generation bridging faith and scale for social impact. When I was given the topic I had, I ran into a problem. Equipping the next generation. Is this particular generation already equipped? Hello? Is our generation equipped enough to make impact? in the society, I mean social impact society. So whatever I'm talking about should be equipping this present generation, which I can cause all of us, Gen Z, from 1997 to 2012. A generation that uh, came into contact with the digital world, that is expressing, that discusses, That's coming to you open your eyes to this world and you make the digital world in this naked form. A generation that is known for creativity, that is socially conscious, conscious of the environment. Though there is a minus for this generation, they have a very short span in giving attention to things. Very short span. So, we are talking about this generation of Gen Z, this generation, because all of you, almost all of you, if not, fell into this group. The thing is not just timely, but also crucial, especially as we navigate this era here in Nigeria, an era marked by significant economic and spiritual challenges. For many of us, being a university Catholic student in a country where faith is working and also economy is very poor, presents so many trials, a crisis of faith and also a problem of both economy. Irrespective of that, within this common group remains an opportunity for us to live out of faith. Remember, the slogan is NFCS what? Living the faith. So I think the team adroitly also addresses your slogan, Living the faith. What actually is faith? In our country, Nigeria, it is essential to ground ourselves in wonderful understanding of this concept. Because so many of us are taking faith for granted. And I'm talking about a living faith, not a faith that is that the living of one faith, not a faith that is completely dead. Faith in the context of the university experience goes beyond just mere adherence to religious practices, even attending masses. Rather, it is a deep personal relationship. When we talk about that, we are talking about a relationship. Establishing a relationship with God. Going for mass is wonderful. And being an active member in your prior societies or service group in the church, kudos for that. But it does not stop there. It must be lived out 
living the faith to make social impact. Faith is the lens through which we view the world as public students. It is also the compass that guides us in our decisions, the decisions we make. We don't just make decisions because it does not strain our environment. We consider a lot of things. First, who am I? That's the first thing that comes to my mind if I want to make a decision. Who am I? I do not, I cannot make a decision just like the man in the market, the cube world, or on the market. Likewise, also, while you are making a decision, some of these decisions must be covered with who you are, what do you represent? and what is your focus. There is also a challenge because of the crisis of faith. In many parts of the world, especially in this country, faith is under pressure. Faith, faith. Just two Sundays ago, in, in our wonderful museum, the voices they had passed, soldiers came and drove away both the priests and also worshippers from the church because uh, one of them was killed or two of them were killed on Thursday and they waited till Sunday before the priest because I normally celebrate 5.30 in campus too so, so the six, by 5.30 I had already passed and was already at my mass center by 10 minutes to 6, they were moving from parish to parish. They were coming, where is the priest? No mass, no, no mass, no market. Our members were killed and most of the people did not do anything. People ran away and they were with their APC, among personal career. They moved from one church to another, they moved from one church, at least they visited four churches, Catholic churches. Some people might have heard of it. And I know God has also relaxed what's the need again of going to church. The faith is under pressure. It is easy to question God in such situations. Where is God? A lot of, a lot of problems will come to mind. Can they be sustained in, in, the, in the northern states? They can. Nobody can try that. Irrespective of that, it is in living our faith that we find the strength to overcome that. Christ never promised us tranquility. That was why he even said, even if you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, he did not say you will be walking in what heaven. No. I will be there to protect you. He knows that there will be vicissitudes of life. The role of faith, skill, also the social impact. Whatever skill is comes to mind, people will always think about practical skills. Making things, making soap, confectionaries, acquiring tech skills and all that. But far and above that, there is this skill that makes you who you are. Some people call them soft skills. That help you in communication. That helps you in public relationship. That helps you to relate very well. That helps you to keep a job. That tells you have to be honest, no matter the situation you find yourself. That tells you that truth remains the best policy. That tells you that clear conscience bears no as accusation. That tells you that you have to speak out, even when others are joining the battle. battle. That tells you that there are times you need to do what to stand out apart from the crowd. These skills are more important than those these other ones that we, that empower us for our day to day, giving us this bread, our daily living. Among these soft skills also is included critical thinking. People no longer think. People no longer think. At times when you engage some university undergraduate, even graduates, you see how they think and you start to wonder. What have you been doing while you are in school? Or what are you doing now that you are in school? These skills will help us in, this, in making social impact in our environment. However, it is important 
to recognize that skills, when they are not guided by faith, can be misused. That is the intersection. A where this topic finds the perfect integration. When these skills are not empowered by faith, it can be misused. And one, instead of becoming beautiful, becomes a beast. There can be tools of exploitation rather than empowerment. Imagine, there is this story there that is told about uh, Joseph Stalin, who beat the chicken, he feathered it, the chicken was cut, was uh, making some uh, shrill noise, showing that it is in pain. He feathered it, even it, when it was bleeding, eventually it left it. Put his hand in his pocket and brought out a badum and was throwing it on the floor, and the chicken was following it. Power can also be misused when not tempered by what? By faith. The power of speech. Somebody who knows how to control the crowd, the demagogue, instead of using it to motivate people, to encourage people, can equally use it to do what? To exploit them. Very crucial. Your skills should be able to help you to advance your career and also to promote common good. For goodness sake, everything about living is not about I, I, I. It should, for one, to be fully alive. It should be from I to another person. An extension of me. Everything should not be revolving around you. There should be opportunities for us to uplift others, to solve problems, to create opportunities, especially for the less unfortunate people among us. Now, the importance of bridging faith and scale. The real power lies in the intersection of faith and scale. When you have a perfect plan in an individual, you will see, you will say, this guy is a saint. When you have a disaster of such plan in an individual, you can say, I never knew that the devil we talk about is a human form. The only thing that this one does not have is a death. death. They create a force capable of driving profound social change. For example, a student who is studying business might use his skills to create a social enterprise that provides jobs for the unemployed. A student in the field of education might also develop programs to improve the literacy rate in undeserved communities. In some of our universities, when I was a student at CDC, we normally organize extramural lessons for what? For the less privileged living around the campus. They are a part of us. Especially the peasants among them, those who sell things to us, the market women. We organize, there is something we have, we call uh, Catholic, Catholic uh, pop. We are the, the NHCS choose people that do what organize lectures. I'm not talking about the ones we do for the one students and also others that might need it, especially during the examination. It is a combination of faith. It is faith that gives you the reason to see why you should leave your comfort zone to go all out and make somebody work better. It is faith. And by doing that, we are not only transforming the lives of those directly impacted, but also the broader community. Living in faith, practical strategies for all of us. We are students. And basically, our academics is the first thing that comes to mind. Above every other thing. Every other activities, both even the NFCS and also that you do in your department, faculty, college, school, is secondary. Your academic journey is a critical time for developing both faith and also skill. Remember, when the certificate is being issued to you, it will be written. He, she has been found worthy in character and what? Learning. Not just in learning, in character and learning. So for those who think that venturing into the university 
is just to go there and get A. You could have fine, first class, what the mama. But you cannot come out a brute, a beast. You should be better. Education should be able to lead you from the darkness of ignorance of everything to do what? To the light of appreciating humanity, of participating in making this world a better place for you and even for people you do not know about. That is where faith also lies. Doing things for people, that is where faith occurs. In practical terms, it can involve engaging with the ethical dimension of the first world. Like people who are in the medical field, reflecting on the sanctity of life and how you can promote the dignity of everybody. Upholding the social teachings of the church, equality, justice, the principles of solidarity and subsidiarity. By making faith a central faith, part of our academic pursuit, we will be better equipped to use these skills in a way that aligns with our values. What value do you stand for? If you have nothing to stand for, definitely you will fall for everything. Somebody who has nothing to stand for, he joined. We unit rice today, yes. We unit beans, yes. Gary, yes. Abu, yes. Semu, why not? Everything. For you, everything is permissible. No value. Nothing to stand for. As we hone our skills, it's about developing our skill with purpose. We have to be intentional about the movement of our skills. What is it being targeted to? And if we are not intentional, we will just be beaten about the bush. Or Ask yourself these basic questions. How can my skill be used to serve others? First, how can I make a positive impact on my community? In our different chaplains, chaplains, we have service groups. How do you make impact in the community, in the chaplains where you exist? In the broader community? Even in your hostel or lodges, do the inmates know that an NFCS member lives here? Is it just by putting on the tag and every time maybe they'll be calling you, oh, go on, go on, go on. I forget them, and I've seen that. But apart from that, you can't even make an impression. As the uh, at the shop of Anita, and God rest his soul, they go get now and say, even negative impression, impressionless, can't even make even a negative impression. Just they are just existing on the level of animal. Consider also, my dear NFCSers, seeking out opportunity that aligns with your faith and values. Father George here is not for pro life. What are those values that align with what pro life? Who come doesn't align with that? It is not about I am poor and wretched. No. It is about now how do I sustain myself at least financially? It's not about if your faith is very important to you, then you should start thinking about what do I do to make some extra cash that are legit, that are have that have perfect alignment with my values as a Christian. This age is an age that says, who church do what help? I know some of you must have made that statement. Who church help? Church is a community of faith and a community that helps, extends its hand to help the other brethren, the weaker ones among us. Again, we need to engage in community services. One of the most powerful ways of living our faith is through active engagement in the community. Nigeria lacks that. The youth also are embedded of that community engagement. Boy, so you go, boy, so you go, nobody comes out. You shout NFC, yes, NFC, living the faith. 
when the line, nobody comes out. Now, how can you make that impression? And also an impression that people that remains indelible in the minds of people. There are many ways to get involved in community services. Like I said, volunteering to teach the younger ones. Helping people in need. No matter how little, the issue is not how much did you give, rather how the intention, his noble intention. Of late, people have started moving to motherless homes, uh, stretching out their hands to, to visit motherless homes during their birthdays. But I will want you to look down, to look down, look at what is below before you cast your eyes in the starry heaven. Before you even extend your hand to those, there are people around you, even the next door neighbor, might not be so comfortable in the same lodge, hostel with you. Oh, you can wait for me, and you know about that. Even when we say that, I will go to jail with you. Wherever peace is where we have motherless offer companies. Jennifer, the But we say charity begins what? Charity begins at home. Now, the role of the church and also public institutions. The church has also a role to play. Catholic institutions, organizations, just like you people are, NFCs. I know all of you should be thinking, what is my take goal? What am I taking goal from here to my chapter NFCs? It should be optimal in your mind. Are we in the Are they not in us? As the chaplain will tell you, okay, give us a report. We went there and we presented you well last night. On 2029, 20, we had one fire and we did this, we did that. It is not the what you are thinking. You see what all these speakers will tell you and drip it, drop it, squeeze it. Let the nectar set them. You must have a message for them. As we navigate the challenges of university life, the church plays a role in providing the spiritual and moral guidance that you need. There are not just places of worship, but also centers for learning, communities for support. Let us take advantage of these people. Your chaplain is not just here giving you every month to celebrate man. He is also here to accompany you in this journey of life. In this journey, but alas, at times when you find yourself at a crossroad, the last person you will ever remember is that person who guides you, who should be able to guide you, who is able to take a bullet from you. You go around, grinding, groping in the dark, looking for a support where it does not exist. That is why I say, always take hold, both in doing charity and also when you need charity to be done to you, when you need assistance of every kind. We, by also promoting social teaching, Catholic teaching offers a rich framework for understanding how faith can inform our effort to create a post just and equitable society. During the just concluded 15 days of uh, end part of our lives, so many people came out to protest non-violently against the high-handedness, the corruption, every possible vice that we see in government. The Catholic CBCN of different chapters, provinces, also issued communicate condemning whatever could have given rise to this protest. Not the protest itself, 
What about could have given right? There are also people that would say, like the Ababi, the senior president, when the people are in the streets, they be in our rooms, not eating chicken. And what called the protesters good for nothing people, disturbing the peace of others. But these are people who need a destructive change, a transformation, not just in their lives, but also in the life of this country. When we engage with some of these principles of social teaching, you gain a deeper understanding of how your faith calls you to act in this world. As I say, this is a generation that embraced at best digital realities. But this is a generation that has also thrown away anything, everything literacy to the winds. Everything. How many of us have read any of the social teaching from the time maybe they were maybe up to this moment? So many of them. And that is why I can say that when a priest might be breaking it down. It will be sounding Greek to you. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. At times, we also take time to apply ourselves to diligent study of these things. If you are studying law, medicine, any field you find yourself, what you should also be thinking about, how can I use this as a means, a channel for advocacy? for the less privileged and also marginalized communities or persons in my vicinity. How am I going to promote the welfare of the poor, of those that throw the in my community? Not just about how you are going to cash out. Cash out is good, because if you cash out, you can help them. Through our force. Through our force. Yes. But you should also think about the others. Again, also, supporting vocational discernment. At times, in the journey of faith, we find ourselves in a crossroad. Understanding what God is actually calling you to do in life is also important. And you might not actually get that discernment unless when you immerse yourself in prayer. Students also pray. There is this young guy that will soon be canonized by Pope Francis. I think he, he is the patron saint of, of uh, 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 digital entrepreneurs. I've forgotten his name. Yes. The young ones also pray. And even the Bible says, allow these little children to come to me. At least, as far as this generation is concerned, you are the youngest apart from the alpha that is coming up from 2013 to maybe 15 years time. The church supports you in this discernment. Even there was you, Gary Marco. Now listen, Gary Marco, when you meet Gary Marco, Gary Marco is about, you will take Gary Jabu, don't attack, don't attack you. You will take Gary, don't attack white. You you want to take one. You wrap all this thing and you begin to do what? Stay it. Eventually, what will come out as? Is it as Gary? Is it as Sebo? What can you tell people you are eating? <laughs> In areas of faith, syncretism. You are looking at it. And in this area, I have that you will see shades of Christianity, shades of paganism, shades of this, shades of this. You know, with different, different shades, different, different shades. Before you are at the level of work, a man in the area, you live in the town of Kibu, each one. What well, somebody can eat it's it's over, it's well, it's rice with sauce, it's the love rice, and now rounded it up with roasted plantain. And the mad man by the side was looking observant. Leo, come on, come on, why are you here? Come on, you're not going to eat. That is what should also, you should.
should also guard against that. The church is ready to support you. Support does not always mean when the church gives you handouts, will they give you? Let me tell you, when we talk about empowerment, we talk about these tough skills that will assist you. Now let me let me give you a short story uh, and instances. There is a man called H.A. Dekat. H.A. Dekat missed the opportunity because he came from a very poor home. He went, he, 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 he was an apprentice, but he dedicated himself to that task. More love, more of man. And he vowed, what I miss, basic education, I must give to my kids. Eventually, he had two kids. Edike Chuku and Dador. Edike Chuku was so stubborn. Edike Chuku was the complete opposite of his father. He never gained that mission because he was in the university and wasted four years there. Eventually, he entered the court and came out. Those soft skills of honesty, hard work, either they deluded him or he never gave a damn about it. Adora herself, so wonderful, a medical student, but he is a very bad boss. In his team, he would always do what? Give them slap if anybody, if anybody uh, does anything that shouldn't be. His key arm was something else. At a point, even the way he attends the patient at the point in the hospital couldn't endure, couldn't stomach his bad attitude. And he was, she was prostituted. These people, their parents were so wonderful, but they failed, they failed. Not because of money, the money was there. Even around us, look around you, in your community. Oh my, the parents are not jailful, but the moment their parents die, we know they die higher life, through our thoughts. True. The problem is not money. The problem is, do I have the capacity, these soft skills, to, there are moments you have to bow up. There are moments you have to stay. Take it. You just say, why are you taking it? Why are you this? Everything is not about fight, fight, fight. Everything is not about money, money, money. At all. Most importantly is also the area of mentorship. And I know that is why we have brought us here. Mentorship. All the man. All the other man. Another powerful way of living in faith is through education and mentorship. Who is your mentor? Who do you look up to? St. Paul, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 said, Imitate me as I imitate Christ. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. I'm almost to. Okay, I really finished before this time. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. You, who do you take as your mentor? What qualities endear you to this person? Many of you have skills and knowledge that can be shared with others, especially those who are less privileged. Consider the impact of a university student who, as I have earlier said, who goes out helping your girls that he knows nobody, their parents might not have the form to keep them busy during the holidays. Mentorship is also all about organizing something like this and also expecting to have wonderful takeaways from these uh, conferences and speeches. Looking out to all the people, it might even be a fellow student, it might be a lecturer, it might be somebody who is noble, both in character and also in learning. This is a powerful way through which we can also use our skill and equally gain from that. In the intersection or integration, the holistic approach of skill and faith, we can also run into problems. Like in our terrain, a difficult terrain like Nigeria. In a country where the economy is poor, students face significant challenges in assessing education. 
finding employment, supporting themselves. However, your faith can be a source of residence. You might not be the only person that is without work, though your parents sold pieces of land to support you, but it doesn't give you the opportunity to do what? To vent your anger in the society. No, it doesn't. It is just your faith that will tell you, thou shalt not. Even though they promise you, go and study. But of course, education is not just for putting food on your table. Even though you should be able to put food on your table. There are also, rather, let me challenge you, there are so many of us here who have practical skills, practically in your way back in school. So many. And I know some of your chaplains might, might also have organized that through the NFCS. And I organize them, you don't have to end up that before. Imagine that you are so full of budget 2K and all those stuff. Why not move out and get involved in some of these things? There are ways of living your faith, protecting your faith. It is precious. You have to protect it. Addressing the crisis of faith, it is often because there is a disconnect between what is preached and also what is experienced. People, students might be trying to reconcile, like I know that should be last, last, last year, August. I posted, or rather, a student posted a flyer, soft copy of the flyer, Peter University flyer, on our, on our uh, chaplaincy WhatsApp, NFCS WhatsApp, and mouth started running. So then I said, okay. And of course, with the tuition. Okay, oh, the university is now okay, ready to admit. But look at the school fees. Look at this, look at Is it not the, this university that students struggle to do what poor people contributed to build? And we also saw some students who we are equally armed and one was telling them, okay, as even if your brother is teaching there and the university pays him or her or his sister, 60,000 every month. Will you be happy? I said, uh, let, let them, the church has money. Let them know how they will get money and go also and pay those that will be teaching. That the poor contributed doesn't mean that it is only the poor that will school here. And I know the university or the diocese also have a program for scholarship for the poor ones. We don't have one more. So, through open dialogue, community, building, and also pastoral care, students can be encouraged to keep in their faith and find ways to live in a meaningful way. And we also need to build resilience and hope. That is the ability to persevere in the face of challenges. There are so many things that might shape your faith. Even in our Christianity, so many ministries opening up. Young people, you see them moving every day. They have already, they already have a program. Somebody who come, who came to school to study, we not eventually have the time for him or for herself to sit down and study, engage in meaningful academic activity. I don't think you're doing a service to yourself. On the other hand, the future. Why am I sad? What is even the future? Why are we even talking about integration of skill and also faith? One, by embracing technology and innovation, that is what the era that we are in. As the world continues to evolve, this generation also needs to adopt, adapt, even if we even no. In decades to come, so many uh, uh, occupations, jobs, will be phased out because of, uh, what is it called, advancements in technology. So many will be phased out. Others will just be partially. You might not be fully in control. Machines will be everywhere. Machines, yes. As you mean if you are, I will always set an example. If you are a waiter in a hotel or restaurant, they also have robots, robots waiters. And I think I would even prefer a robot better than somebody up or about to tell you name. Name, to tell me or men. Almost an hour. 
The robot is the motion left. Do that fine. Just come. I will press something. You go to the counter, bring the food. I don't need to give you anything. You also go back. For those who might be preparing to be with us in those things. So you need also to develop practical skills in terms of digital literacy, data analysis, social media, while reflecting on the ethical implications. The social media is also a place we have to tread with care. And I also want to, as I, as I encourage you, I also want to caution you. We don't do anything, everything is just to, for the sake of creating content. No. Your value should also guide you to know what content do I put on. Like in the church, the, the sacrament of reconciliation is such a hallowed, it is the throne of God's mercy. And people just jump into that and create content out of that and make a mess of that one. All in the name of creating content. What else did you approach that throne of God's mercy? I said here three years ago. Did you ask, are you kidnapped? No. Are you living in the desert? No. Are there priests around you? Yes. Now, why? I do not believe it. Finally, faith and skill is essential for equipping this generation and also preparing the next generation. If we are well equipped now, we can have something to transfer because no one gives what he does not have. As leaders, you are leaders in your different campuses, in your different chapters. You should be adaptable, innovative, and grounded in faith. You should be grounded in faith. Because the other students will come up to you if they do not see the chaplain or any other person. When these tools are provided for you, you need to live with integrity and compassion. Not just leaders who will embezzle forms. There are also people like that. By making them, have given them both, you have already carved a niche for them. Why you see when they go for that? Eventually, they graduate from there to zoos in the wider community. Whether you are called to leadership in the church, even in your profession, even in your community, remember that true leadership is all about service. It's all about making social impact. When I was coming in, the student that was the me, I asked him, is it your people that just generated this refuse? He said, no, no, Father, we will leave this place better than we met it. And I was so edified about that comment. We will leave this place better than we met it. And that should be the principle. They were waiting all along. During our university day, when I was doing my youth service, he found a people. When you go to, there are some newspapers in the visit, like Kabia, Mazin, or Kanan. If I had never had a for vacancies, we need people who are, mm, who can motivate themselves, who do not, who can work under little or no supervision. Who can work under little or no supervision? The church also wants people like that. People with initiative. People that can act as leaders with humility and also a commitment to living faith. My dear students, as we leave this conference today, I want you to take seriously this action bridging our faith with skill, both soft skills and also character transformative skills. It's not about so about uh, practical skills. The challenge you face are significant. The challenges you face are significant. But also your potential to make a difference is equally significant. People are looking up to you. You might be a mentee, but other people also look at you as a mentor. The younger ones, so many people here work, but they're looking up to you. What has this year four student, year two, year three student has to offer us? 50 years students. By integrating your faith and your skill, you become agents of positive change. Your tenor as the president of your school, of your college, of your department of record, should also bring in transformation. Open it, the NFC is the school, we become a disaster. 
Look, people should be saying, uh, who, who was that former NFCS executive? Any executive here vying for any post, they will want to vote you in because you will bring change, you will bring life. Forget about what others are doing. Remember, your motto is living the pains. Let it be your guide as you navigate the vicissitudes of this world. And let it inspire you to use your skill in the service of others. The future is in your hands. And if you grasp it, then you cannot say, how are we going to empower the next generation? Embrace this future with faith. Do not be afraid. Yeah, adulthood has come. So we be thinking, what does school after life, life after school, how does it look like? No, do not be afraid. Okay, I will be there. I bought to you make it to They are not better than, than you. Embrace it with faith. Embrace it with love. Love your environment. And also, most especially, be hopeful that things will come better. Because the Bible tells us, for those who love God, everything works unto good. May God bless you and also bless you on this journey of life. This is my prayer for you through Christ our Lord.